Okay, so I'm going to talk about models today. And let's look at this first model here. You see something up there that you know it's not a model, it's the Earth. But on the side, I have another model that's a great model, the globe. The globe is a model of the Earth. It's not the Earth, but it's very useful. Uh, and then on the other side, I have a computer model of the Earth. Also, it's useful in different ways, and it does different things. It's not the Earth. And then I have two equations, one for the surface area of the Earth and one for the volume of the Earth. So we can represent the Earth in lots of different ways with these models. So let's look at some physics and use that to make another model. So suppose I took a ball and I, and I throw it, but I'm standing on ice. Well, I have to push the ball in order to move it, and so it's going to push back on me, and I'm going to move. So that's what would happen if you threw a ball on ice. But I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. Let's say that we take these balls and we throw them down and say these balls are air. This is what a helicopter does. It's throwing air down and that's what makes it stay in the air. So there are two ways that I could do this. I could have a small rotor on my helicopter, like you see there, but if I do that, I'm going to have to throw the air a lot faster in order to make myself stay up. I can have a bigger helicopter with a bigger rotor and I could throw more air, but not quite as fast. So that you could do it either way. Now, let's look at real air. Air is made up of little particles, but let's think of it as a volume of air. And if I take that volume of air, it's like a column, and I throw it down. That's what this helicopter is doing. Now, there's two important equations. This, the important point is, this is just based on throwing balls down. Okay, so I can say how much how fast does that air have to go in order to make the helicopter hover? That's this one equation up here, the velocity. The other one is how much power does it take to make this helicopter hover? And, and that depends on how fast you're throwing the balls and how big the helicopter is. Okay. Okay. What about real helicopters? We can actually look up these things. We can look up how much they weigh, how big the rotors are, and we can look up the power plant. And different helicopters have different size rotors and everything. So what if I make a comparison between the power calculated for my model and the power that's actually listed for these helicopters? If we do that, this is what we get. So this is a graph that says, I'm going to compare my model with actual real data. The model may be bogus, OK? But if it agrees with data, it works. So that's a really important thing about models. You have to check it with real data and see if it works. And this one works. So that means that we can do something with that model. So let's take that same idea of throwing balls down and making a helicopter fly and use it for something else. Here you can see two helicopters. The one on the left is a human-powered helicopter. OK, these things are huge. You can see in the picture, it's got four rotors and a guy in the middle that pedals, and, it, and it's just powered only by a human. But the rotors have to be huge. They have to be so big because that reduces the power that the person needs to pedal to make it hover. This is a real thing, okay? And it can't hover for very long because the guy has to pedal in using a power of uh, 300 watts. That's a lot, okay? So it's not a practical thing, but it's still useful. Now, on the right, we have another flying thing. This is the helicarrier from S.H.I.E.L.D. So it also has, yeah, see, it's, it's not real. OK, but it's not real. Yeah, I know. So the, the rotors on there, we can look at the size of those. We can look at the weight, and we can find out how fast the air would have to go down from the helicarrier. And if you use the same model, then you get an airspeed throwing down faster than the speed of sound. So I mean, that's not really realistic, but it still works in the movies. But we could do other models, too. What if I was trapped in a room with a zombie? That would not be good. And, and I, there's no doors. Is there any way I could move around so that the zombie would never get me? So this is a model of a person and a zombie trapped in a room. Uh, yeah, I know, you're thinking it's crazy, but it, if you want to model it, you can model it. So the zombie here, all I have to do is say there's some forces pushing the zombie for, towards the person and something preventing the zombie from speeding up forever. And then I can just put the human in different patterns to see if the zombie would ever catch it. And in this case, if you move in a circle in a room with the zombie, then 
the zombie could kind of like orbit around the center and it'd never catch you. I mean, you'd eventually, you know, get thirsty or have to go to the bathroom, but you could survive for a while. Here's another model. This is a, a, real, a picture of a real comet, and you can see the tail. And so we can actually model the interactions of the dust and the gas that come off the comet uh, as they interact with the sun with some simple models about light from the sun and solar pressure from the sun. And so below that, I have another model, a computer model of the trajectory of a comet and, and two tails. And so it's a very simple model, but you can see that you can get something that looks like a comet with a simple model. So I've shown you a couple models here, and you can see that that's how science works, making models. So now you can go make your own models. Thank you.